Hey, this is Joey Concepcion, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Let me hit record. Perfect. Hey, man, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Hi. My partner may or may not jump in. He had something come up, so he had a dip for a little bit. You there? Yeah. I'm okay. Here. Cool. So for those, um, I guess, not familiar with you, can you give us, a, I guess, your two second elevator pitch? Who are you? And uh, my name is Joey Concepcion, and um, uh, I do a lot of uh, session guitar work, and um, uh, I've played in bands like Armageddon Sanctuary. Um, I just did a tour filling in for Dark Tranquility. And I've filled in for Arch Enemy in the past, and uh, I'm about to release my second solo album. Perfect. I appreciate you taking the time. So I didn't realize you played with Sanctuary. So you played with uh, the great Warrell Dane? Um, it was just towards the end. Um, he actually passed by the time I, I wasn't able to play with him yet, but it came, it was like only months away from happening. Oh, really? Yeah. That sucks because he's one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, it it almost happened, but I did get to play with them. They had a different singer at the time. That's great. That's great that you're able to do all that kind of stuff. What kind of uh, do you have any formal training? Or are you self taught? Um, I, I took private lessons when I was younger. Like I started when I was eleven. Okay. It, and how did you come to the attention of um? of all these bands that you're playing, been out on the road with like Arch Enemy and, I mean, because those are not small bands. I just grew up listening to them and stuff, you know, from like Headbangers Ball, MTV, yeah. and, um, you know, Jamie Josta hosted the show. And I just, I saw all those awesome bands like, you know, Arch Enemy and Shadows Fall and All That Remains and uh, Kill Switch yeah. and Cage. Like, so I kind of grew up watching and listening to that second wave of Headbangers Ball. Right. Yeah, I grew up listening to the first one with uh, <laughs> was, Ricky Rackman, also, was, like, was Ricky Rackman on it when you were listening to it or was he gone already? Um, He was gone, but I did end up watching a lot of that too. Like I found like VHS tapes and yeah. like, a long time ago and like pre-recorded stuff excellent so i know your your new single giant spider attack on the city is out and you've actually got a friend of ours that played drums for you jeremy how did yeah. you come across how did you come across him well i've played with jeremy before in the absence oh okay um um the florida bass band you know yeah and yeah. um i joined them in I think it was 2015 on until like the pandemic so so did you play with them on the road uh yeah i, I did i did a couple tours with them um we did one with dside and um all those florida bands yeah <laughs> and um did you guys do seventy thousand yeah. tons of metal yeah they they, they were on that I, I wasn't with them at okay the time. i know i saw them on the boat i was just curious if you were with them at the uh mm -hmm. at that time so when you're writing, where do you draw your inspiration from? And is there something, I know this may be difficult with a musical sort of thing, but is there something you want your fans to take away from after listening to uh, one of your records or the song, Bingle? Um, I hope it inspires anyone. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I just like, I, if I can inspire somebody to play solos or, or make some riffs, like that'd be cool okay um i don't know how long uh are you planning on following the <laughs> the same new business model of releasing singles like you know every six weeks or whatever or are you gonna do a, a full proper release or an ep or um yeah i'm gonna do like a full-length release um i i don't think that there's anything wrong with doing single after single i think it's a good way to start um I have this song and then I, I might have another single or two coming out and then the full length, which is, all the songs are going to be on. 
I agree with you in in one respect that you know it keeps your name in the people's mind and it, especially with people having such little attention spans I guess but I'm old school as well and I really appreciate you know a full length record where you can sit down and listen to it the way you wrote it and you know the theme and reading the liner notes and doing all that stuff yeah me too like it it's just so weird in this digital age you yes. know Nobody has any attention span at all, and they want to digest like four minute segments at a time. I used to feel like super stoked just to get a CD at the store and then just like Master of Puppets. Like I wanted to know all the lyrics and stuff and the right. line notes. Who like, they thanked and everything, right? Yeah. And I think there's a lost art form in the <clears throat> sequencing that's gone now too, right? Because you just drop a single, there's no need to try and create a mood on a record. By yeah. sequencing the songs that you the way you wanted them to be, totally. Yeah, that makes, like, sense. That makes sense, right? I mean, the, there was like a, a mood that yeah. you created, and you, it's sort of missing in the in the digital age. But I know it's part of uh, part of living in the you know the twenty twenties. That's the way you have to keep your music out there and do your thing. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on taking this out on the road at all? Uh, I would really like to. There's those talks before. So um, I definitely will plan to do so, like maybe towards the end of the year or early next year. Do you have a band that you work with or are you just going to hire people? Uh, I don't have anybody in mind, but um, there's a few people that I, I'm thinking about. And yeah, having a few band members. Um, when you're... That, when you're... When you're doing this, I mean, was Jeremy part of the recording? Or are you doing everything and then hiring people? Yeah, on Jeremy like recorded drums at his house in Florida and sent the files, and I tracked everything here. And do you do the rest of it? Are you playing bass as well? Or are you? Yeah, I am. Um, so this album, I started like writing like almost five years ago now. So it's oh, like wow. it's finally at it. It just needs to come out and be burst because it's like it's like it, it was a little agonizing through the pandemic but like it, it was written all before so i'm really i really want to like move to the next step and stuff and right these are pretty uh cool songs that i'm really proud of and um i just hope everyone likes it it's kind of quirky and weird but it has it's it's heavy moments and it has like it's like more like cool beautiful solo moments or something you know <laughs> right so you said it was written before the pandemic was it hard to sit on it and also was there any sort of uh morphing during the pandemic because you had time to play with it yeah yeah in that sense yeah so it changed as you went along yeah but it was probably difficult to hold on to it right yeah, it was like a lot a lot of everybody in the music industry, like my friends who are on tour, like they just get into a deep depression. So it's like they it's like it's just like a weird Yeah. yeah. What was it like being on the road with uh, even with Dark Tranquility after all this time? Was it fun fun to be back out there and Yeah, it really was. It was it was like medicine, you know. <laughs> were you nervous at all to get back on the stage? A little bit. Yeah, like, I think it, like, took, like, a week or two for me to just, like, realize, oh, okay, like, the world's not ending, and I can right. enjoy doing this again. I hope I can do it more. <laughs> <laughs> but I imagine the energy from the fans was probably pretty great, too, right? Because people like me are just as excited to be at a show as you are to be playing. Yeah. So the exchange of energy is probably amazing. Yeah, yeah, I really needed it, too. Yeah. What do you have planned next? Um, I'm I'm gonna be helping out a friend's band, to, uh, another um, friend from Massachusetts, playing some shows for his band. I don't know if I'm allowed to announce it yet. That's fine. But I'll keep that as a surprise. And <laughs> but yeah, I'm just uh, I'm gonna be doing some music videos for my upcoming album and work on that. And are you doing those yourself? Uh, no, I have a friend that's filming, and um, he he did videos for my first one. Oh, nice! And um, I'm I'm gonna be mixing the album myself, and then another friend of mine is gonna be mastering it. 
Oh, sweet. Maybe that's, so very DIY then. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And that's uh, if fans want to get a hold of you. Are you pretty uh, active social media wise? I try to be. It's I've been like a hermit these days, but <laughs> it, it comes back and forth, you know. And like on the Dark Tranquility tour, I was just on like I had like con- content to post, you know. Right. So uh, um, you want to give us your uh, your social media sites where we can find you? Um, if you just um, if you want to look up. Joey Concepcion on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. It's Joey Concepcion guitar. Um, yeah, I think it's just Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. <laughs> <I'm> okay. <laughs> that's perfect. So that's all uh, that hits all of my questions. You hit Google or something too. <laughs> yeah, that's all of my questions. And I missed something you want to cover. And I hope that wasn't too bad. Oh uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, much, brother. Good luck with everything. We'll see you soon. I appreciate it. You got it. Hello out there. Yes, hello out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist, Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Them But the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!